Hello to everyone listening via Discord and the live stream. I am Monsignor Alfonso Thompson, the Prefect of the Dicastery of Communications. The Pope, Pope Augustine, is currently visiting the Pontifical Gregorian University. So I will be interviewing a few groups of professors and past seminarians for the Gre who have made the Gregoriana what it is today. And so my guest today is Romain. He was a past priest for the Archdiocese of Dublin and a seminarian for the Gregoriana. They... So welcome. Hello, it's an honor to be here today. Thank you for the invite. Yeah. All right. So what was it like to be a seminarian at the Gregoriana? Well, in all honesty, um, the lessons were amazing because it was kind of uh, beneficial. And I think the main goal of the seminary was to prepare you for um, holy orders and, you know, the journey that you're going to face had. And I experienced this firsthand because I was a former professor there as well. And yeah, the lessons there were about the fate and they were kind of an advanced theology and others like they taught you basic stuff and as you progress about the years they were like you know quite harder but they always tried to make it understandable as possible so i would i would just say that the lessons were beneficial and you know all the more just awesome and amazing that's great so the next question I have now that you were retired, what was your impressions of being ordained on Roblox as a priest on January 3rd, 2021? Well, to be honest, um, ordination, I don't know if anyone heard about this uh, before when I was in my diaconate, I went over emotional, but, you know, but to be ordained on Roblox, because it's... It was kind of like, for me, a practice for the real life ordination because I, I am currently discerning priesthood. To me, the ordination was just life changing because it felt so real. It felt like I was just standing there in front of the bishop, of an actual bishop who was actually questioning me and he was actually laying, my, laying hands on me. And yeah, it was, it felt real. It felt sereno as, a, as I've heard. So if I were to describe it, it, would, it was a, a life-changing experience, to say the least, and yeah. That's great. Next question. You were a vocations director for the Archdiocese of Dublin. What was your advice to those who have a vocation in life? My advice are... Being, so my advice for those who are discerning is, you know, because life can be challenging, especially, especially for those who want to become a priest these days, you might face, you know, being disowned by your parents or, you know, having people tell you that, oh, that becoming a priest is the wrong path to take. You should become this career. You should take this career it's just a whole thing but my perfect my advice is to just keep a hold of your vocation and for and from a real priest ask god for a sign that for vocation it's just basically like if you feel a vocation you hold tight to it you stay faithful and you know maybe someday you'll get that vocation at you know, you've been wanting for years and years. But also pray. Keep your faith. Remember your faith. And put that faith in the vocation you want. Pray. Pray the rosary. Pray the devotions to the Blessed Virgin. Or pray to the saints, your patron saints, like Charles Borromeo and Maximilian Kolbe, or whatever saint you're devoted to. So I think it's just prayer in general. You just pray and you keep a hold of your vacation. Yeah, I think that's a... Yeah, yeah, that's a great thing. Saints definitely... 
definitely help you out. Next question. Did you ever have, like, a go-to person in the seminary? Oh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I wouldn't say uh, I, I was this person's favorite student because uh, uh, I had a hot because I gave him a hard time. But it would be his holiness. And uh, he was my former professor. And I remember my presbyterate uh, phase where I was learning to be a priest. And I kind of messed up. And yeah, but before His Holiness was elected, when he was known as uh, Alexander Johnson, he was actually my mentor. He was a close person and he would advise me. And he always told me that I could do this and you just have to put your mind to it. And even when I failed my lessons, he told me to not give up. It, he told me not to lose heart he just told me to you know keep going and you and maybe one day you'll get ordained and yeah and we can always try again so it would be car it will be his holiness uh augustine the fifth yeah definitely who was your what was your first reaction to becoming an auxiliary bishop, like the announcement made. What were your thoughts? Well, as you, as everyone knows, I am retired. Yeah, but if I was still in the group, if I was still there, if I was, if you know, I was still there, I was still serving in Dublin. Uh, the first reaction, I, I, I remember just closing my uh computer and I just screamed for a minute because I was excited. But oh, that's funny. At, at the same time, um, I, I I was just sweating. I couldn't sleep that night because not I and I think I took it a bit seriously. It, it was because I was nervous, because I I imagined myself maybe a month after being consecrated as a bishop, and His, His Excellency Damien would task me with an ordination, and I'm like, oh my god. I'm a bishop, and this is my first ordination, but, yeah, yeah but, that's I think, I think that's all of the bishop's reaction, they get excited at first, but they come to realize that it's a headache, a lot of bishops can attest to this, Gustavo, um, Canon Lebowski, who was a former bishop, Cardinal Hans, and yeah, a lot more bishops can attest to this, the cardinals even, so, yeah, I was excited, but, knew the possibilities and yeah that's it yeah definitely that is a big like change being from a priest to being ordained to a bishop so that's all the questions i have today i'm so glad you could join me today romaine and yeah i think that's it Again, thank you. Thanks for having me. You're Thanks welcome. for having me. Yeah. Have a great day. God bless everybody. His Holiness will be coming into the St. Ignatius of Loyola Catholic Church in a few minutes to give a speech about about all of the about the Gregoriana Seminary. So it is taking a little bit of time to do his computer but be assured he is coming. Coming up, we will be interviewing Monsignor Chris Marquis and Canon Martin Lebowski. They will be, they both will be interviewed by me 
once the Pope gives his address and and he's greet and he greets all the professors and seminarians of the seminary. So how it will be laid out is once the Pope arrives at the chapel, he will walk down to the sanctuary and the rector, which is Canon Martin Lebowski, will begin with a prayer and then he will have an introduction. And then he, the Pope will give his address and a blessing. And then after, he will meet with the teachers and the seminarians of the Gregoriana. And then we will be continuing on with the rest, with the rest of the interviews. We will be having about three interviews. We already had one from Father Romain. Sorry, not Father Romain. Just Romain. He he was a vocations director for the Archdiocese of Dublin. And many and many people heard not many people the new sorry the new vocations director is is father Leonardo Benaventi he is he what he's a very good priest he's been around for many years and He's had a, a lot of experience in many roles, and he's, yeah, he's been in, he's had many roles in many dioceses, and so, as we see in the game, His Holiness is starting to join, and we will go ahead and start with the blessing and the greetings and all that fun stuff it may take a little bit due to the Pope's connection but we should be getting the We should be doing the prayer in a few minutes. Here we have Ken and Martin Lebowski saying the prayer now.
Canon Martin Lebowski just finished the prayer. And now he is going to give an introduction for the Pope. Canon Martin Lebowski has been a as a priest of the Institute of Christ the King, sovereign priest, in April of 2020, he was ordained with the Archdiocese of Los Angeles and remains there as a resident priest. Canon Lebowski is the fourth rector of the Gregoriana, after Cardinal Hopkins, Cardinal Hans, and recently Cardinal Garcia.
as Pope Augustine is saying in his speech, um, he is in awe with how active and how he's in awe with how active and how people can stay active even in a year with and actually a century with such bad type of people and that because we have so much active people it's because of our priests and our deacons and the seminary is the reason why all these priests and deacons are being ordained and are staying active even in bad times and yeah like he was saying professors are very important they they are a very vital part and they make what the group is Yeah, and he said they try to contribute on a daily basis, which means that they're trying on their best. And if they don't succeed, they try even more. We both seminaries have some, sorry, not both, three seminaries. All three seminaries have some pretty talented priests. We have St. Philip Neri's Seminary, which is a part of the ICKSP. The Gregoriana, which the Pope is visiting today, and St. John Seminary. They all have great professors, and the Pope now is giving an apostolic blessing. The professors and the seminarians are now going to be lining up to meet the Pope. The current priest that is meeting with the Pope is Father Paul Grantham. Pa Father Grantham is a priest of the Archdiocese of Dublin and Director of Communications. He was ordained in December 2021 and is now responsible for the educational f functions of the seminary. Father Grantham ensures the smooth and quick seminary formation of the Gregoriana.
and this is Monsignor Chris Marquise. Monsignor Marquise is a priest and vice chancellor of the Archdiocese of Dublin. Being ordained in September 2021, Monsignor is one of the oldest professors within the university. He is in charge of dealing with the admission processes of the seminary and is responsible for any upcoming seminarians. He is one of those pe he's one of the people I am going to be interviewing later. So you'll get to hear about his about his seminary life and all that stuff. Yes, Chris Marquis definitely gets works very hard and is very talented in accepting and going for all the applications throughout the week. This is This is Bishop Gustavo Mendez. He is the Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles and was ordained in the Gregoriana. He is one of the professors and definitely has to take on some big roles as he's a part of LA and a professor of the Gregoriana. He also does many ordinations for for the archdiocese and we are very grateful for him. He's definitely a very hard worker. Right next to him, who I'm seeing who the Pope is talking to, is Father Gabriel Volpe. He is a priest of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles and was ordained with the Archdi with the Diocese of Dublin here at the Gregoriana. Fun fact, he is Gustavo Mendez's brother. So there are very they both have a good bond and are great clerics. Something funny is that Father Volpe makes statues and they're pretty good. He's pretty talented. Actually, we're this whole community is very talented with all of their with all their builds. We have a lot of talented people in the Vatican. And so yeah. We're very grateful.
Roblox is having some problems with their chat, of course. The Pope is now meeting with the seminarians of the Gregoriana. This is seminarian Paul Joseph, who the Pope is currently talking to. He's a pretty active pre he's a pretty active seminarian in the Vatican. He does daily readings and is a is a lector and And he has been a part of the Gregoriana for a pretty, a pretty long time. He's been here for about four months. As Pope Augustine is saying, the Vatican is trying to make it more faithful, not as much role play, which is why the Synod is, that's what the Synod was for. To, um, to make it more faith-based, the Vatican more faith-based compared to more role-play-like. That's why Cardinal Antonius of the MSJ, he he banned having prayer services in game due to it not holding any sacramental value and that all prayer services excluding the in-game ones are fully valid real life layman prayers so And it's for those people that may not know how to pray. And that's why having prayer services are important for, for the Vatican. So it can be more faith-based. This is... Seminarian Sorry. This is Seminarian David Longford. He has been Oh no, that's not David Longford, sorry.
And that concludes the meeting with the professors and seminarians of the staff. We will be having a few more interviews in a few minutes. His Holiness is going back to the Vatican City very soon. He's about to leave. But Kenan Lebowski is thanking him, and of course, Roblox Chat <laughs> decides to not work when we want it. His Holiness is talking in. If you can see up top, because Roblox does not seem to like it when we're, yeah, chat bad. <laughs> His Holiness has Today I have Monsignor Chris Marquise. The Reverend Monsignor Marquise is a priest and director of the Archdiocese of Dublin's Evangelization Committee. Having been ordained in September of 2021, Monsignor is one of the oldest professors in the, at the university. He is responsible for the admissions process at the seminary and for incoming seminarians. Thanks for coming, Monsignor. Yeah. 
Alright, your description mentions you were the you are the dean of admissions. What's it like going through numerous applications throughout the months? Well, uh, looking through applications is actually a, a relief too because uh, it kind of reminds me of a you know I have a purpose, and uh, it kind of it kind of occupies it kind of uh, occupies my mind too. And uh, to see the, these uh, applications means uh, there's a future. This community has a future, so I'm really proud of that. All right, that's great. I'm Ooh. probably gonna ask this for everyone, but did you have a go-to person in the seminary? Hey, what? Did you have a go-to person in the seminary, like someone you relied on? Well, uh, hmm. well, actually, well, actually, I kind of relied on uh, Canon uh, Jaki Sanchez. He was a yeah, he was a big help to me while I was still seminary. He was a yeah, he was at the time uh, like VMC of uh, uh, the late Archbishop, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's all I can say. He's a he's a good help when I was a seminary. Yeah, Canon Jack is, is definitely a inspirational person. Yeah. Alright. That's true. Having worked at the Gregoriana, how has your style of being a priest changed? Uh, well, uh, I actually, I was, uh, I kind of, let's just say I kind of forgot the, uh, uh, I kind of forgot my old friends, not really forgot, but uh, playing, you know, with uh, spending time <gasps> at, at uh -huh. together because uh, I was kind of used with this uh, lifestyle as a priest and, uh, you know, I've, I've just attended uh, like churches, events. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, but I think it's, I think I, uh, it's, it's just a, it's just my job. I signed up for it, so. Yeah. And my friends understand, so. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. All right. Since you started working at the Gregoriana, what has changed since you first started? All right, uh, time to jump, sorry. Since you started working at the Gregoriana, what has changed since you first started? Hmm. I'd probably say. <laughs> Uh, like the uh, time because uh, as before I w I uh, used to say mass daily like yeah I was yeah just daily and uh and with that well I, what before I and before I uh, applied to be a professor I still had time I still had time to say the mass but when I signed up for it I was like uh hey when's this when's the when's the test you know I, I'm like worrying about them very often and uh, yeah that's what I. But yeah, I, I've already coped with it, so... Uh, Alright. How was your seminary experience, and how did, how long did it take you to complete it all? Uh, yeah, that's what, uh, long story short, uh, I'll just say the whole story here. Uh, so, uh, I kind of joined the seminary to uh, learn more about the faith, because uh, back then I had little knowledge about the faith. So yeah, I joined the seminary to learn about it, and to be honest, I was pretty nervous. You know, I really did not know how to address people. I remember calling everyone sir. <laughs> like for, for cardinals, I called them sir instead of him. Oh, that's it's funny. Kind of a, it's kind of a, yeah. I uh, I even tried to uh, DM the pope. <laughs> I really did not know anything about it, and uh, I called him sir. Oh gosh, but, uh, that's funny. Yeah, I I I got through it eventually so but uh moving on after i sent my application and passed my interview i was told to join the archbishop the archdiocese of london and uh yeah before i entered i uh had a short conversation with the archbishop which was very awkward because i called him sir <laughs> and uh yeah yeah that went by and uh yeah i got to cope with it and uh i got ordained deacon for some time and uh yeah it was one of my greatest moments here and uh Time passed by again, and uh, you know, through bad times, through good times and bad times, I eventually got uh, ordained a priest. Uh -huh. Yeah, that was probably the greatest moment. 
Alright, that's all the questions I have today for you. Thank you for joining me, Monsignor. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you. And finally, we are going to have Ken Martin, but I'm going to interview Ken Martin Lebowski. He is the director of the seminary. Last but not least, we have Canon Martin Lebowski. He is a priest of the Institute of Christ the King, Sovereign Priest. In April of 2020, he was ordained with the Archdiocese of Los Angeles and remains there as a resident priest. Canon Lebowski is the fourth rector of the Gregoriana after Can Cardinal Hopkins, Cardinal Hans, and recently Cardinal Garcia. So welcome, Canon. Thank you for having me. What changes have you made in your role as rector of the Gregoriana to improve the smooth operation of the seminary? Well, the past weeks we've reinstituted new professors, young professors from the Archdiocese of Dublin. Uh, we are getting new minds within the seminary, and we are uh, reproducing activity to where we once had. I see. Being ordained in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, did your seminary professors give you any tips on how to succeed? What I remember from Cardinal Ward was, uh, if you're going to do it right, you do it 100% right. So there's nothing that goes as bad as liturgical abuse. And obviously we don't want to mess up during the liturgy because this is for educational purposes and who are we to mess up and show the youth the errors, you know? So if you're going to do it right, you have to do it a hundred percent right. So therefore you can show everyone the correct way on how it's actually done. That's a great quote from Cardinal Ward. Did you ever have a go-to person in the seminary? Go-to person? What, what do you mean? Like, a person that you could rely on. Uh, within the seminary, I, I didn't have much affiliations with anyone. Um, Father Anderson from Los Angeles, I knew quite a bit. But other than that, I didn't know anyone until after my diaconate ordination. I see. You've been a pretty active priest since 2020. How have you kept up and stayed active for so long? Uh, it's a lot of balancing. Time off, balancing, time off. I see. That's all I have for the questions. I thank you so much for coming to this interview. Yes, and thank you so much for having me.
this time we are now taking a photo for the for the seminary with the pup. That's pretty much all I have for the papal visit. I want to thank everyone for listening in via live stream. And I want to thank all of the interviewees. We're the... The Castor Communications is trying to improve and make... and stream more videos for masses like for Pentecost and all the and all the other masses that the Pope may be having like papal visits so I want to thank again everyone for listening in and that's all I have.